Shutter Speed, Episode 1, a brand new podcast on photography. Do you love photography? Are you somebody that wants more out of your photography? To make money from your photography but don't know how to start? Welcome to Shutter Speed. Your host, Peter Spakowski, will guide you with tips, strategies, interviews, and know-how to start making money to pay for date night, new gear, or start a full-time career with your passion of photography. Let's get this show started. Here's your host, Peter Spakowski. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shutter Speed. My name is Peter Spakowski and I am your host. I've been podcasting for nearly two years now. I've produced over 200 podcasts. These were podcasts on motivation and mindset coaching. I love talking about leadership, motivation, and mindset coaching. It makes me come alive. But I love photography. Photography is an area I love in my soul. It's who I am. It's who I identify myself as. Maybe you're somebody that loves photography and you love it as a hobby. Maybe you're like me and you got into photography because it's such a cheap hobby to get into, right? If you truly love photography, you know that is a completely false and sarcastic statement, right? Just a good starter professional camera body can start out costing you $2,000, But I started my photography business with a $400 digital camera, and you can too. If you have an iPhone these days, that's enough to get started making money in photography. How would you like to make enough money to pay for date night, new camera gear, or even make it your full-time profession? Shutter Speed is a new podcast I'm starting, and the purpose of this podcast is to help take your love and your passion for photography and start making money on it. Have it start working for you. Whether you're new to photography or have been shooting for years like me, this podcast helps to give you ideas, strategies, and motivation to go out and make money from your photography. And if you listen to the end of this podcast, I'm giving away my five top strategies to start making money from your photography by the end of the week. These are strategies that work. And if you act right away, you very well could pay for dinner this weekend. I actually fell into photography by accident. And it was actually after my dreams came to a crashing halt and everything I wanted to do in my life wasn't going to happen. I was a nationally ranked bodybuilder and my love was competing in bodybuilding events. I put my heart and soul into it. It was consistency in the gym. I practiced my posing, all the right nutrition every single day. Bodybuilding requires 24 by 7 dedication. I would wake up and eat, set my alarm for three hours and eat again all day long. I was eating every three hours if I wanted to or not. It's hard work, but it was photography where I found bodybuilding. My cousin Johnny had pictures on his wall in his bedroom when I was a kid of all these professional bodybuilders. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Lou Ferrigno, Franco Colombo, and Tom Platts. These guys were like comic book heroes on his wall. The muscles were huge. Veins were huge. These guys looked beyond human. My cousin would tease me how I was going to look like them someday. And I just remember running into my mom, screaming how I didn't want to look like that. Eventually, my mind changed from never wanting to look like that to wanting to look like that and be the best in the world. And I was willing to put in the hard work to do it. Many of the pictures were taken by a photographer by the name of Bill Dobbins. At the time, he was the best photographer at capturing physiques. So much so, I then started putting his pictures on my wall and practiced the poses that he captured in his pictures. So because of his pictures, he was a major influence in my life. Most of my life and what I wanted to do formed from Bill Dobbins, a photographer, Arnold Schwarzenegger for having an amazing physique and beyond personality, 
Hulk Hogan for encouraging us kids to say our prayers, train and take our vitamins, and Joe Weider who globalized professional bodybuilding and made it mainstream media. Here's a little fact about me. I'm a mindset coach, so I set some pretty crazy goals for myself. One of my top goals in my life is I want to buy a house next to Hulk Hogan in Clearwater, Florida. Not just a house in Clearwater, but the house next to Hulk Hogan. Hey, if Gary V can have the dream of buying the New York Jets, then I can have the dream of buying the house next to Hulk Hogan. But let's talk about my background in photography. People often ask me, how long have I been a photographer? I really don't know how to answer that. I've always been drawn to cameras. Back when I was three or four, people learned if they were at a holiday event or a family get together to not leave their camera unattended. Three or four year old Peter would swipe that up and walk around the house taking pictures, going outside and finding something to shoot. I would use up the entire roll of film because that was before digital cameras. I had a favorite teddy bear that I would even pose so I could take his picture. I just loved taking pictures. And it wasn't the end result of having the pictures that last a lifetime. So you can remember good times together, but it was the physical act of taking the pictures, the directing, the staging, the positioning of my subject in the frames. Both of my grandparents on either side of my family had a collection of pictures I took as a young kid. Many of these times were just cameras that I found laying around and I would go and just take that sucker and go take as many pictures as I could before, until the pictures ran out. My grandpa on my mom's side even wrote on the back of one of my pictures, Peter's first photograph. When my grandparents passed, my cousin got all the pictures, so I'm sure that one's in there someplace. It was a picture of a carton of milk. Every vacation, I would have a camera with me. There was even a point when disposable cameras came out, and I would use my money that I made from my lawn cutting company I started at 12 on film and developing. And in my teens, I started going to WWF events, now known as the WWE, and my heroes were Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior. And when they would come to town, I think I took my camera to each and every single wrestling event that I went to. And I started going to all the events all the time in the area. There has to be over 100 events I went to, and I had a huge collection of pictures, and I still have them today. One of them even from the Michigan State Fair back when I was a little kid. I then started going to bodybuilding events. Arnold Schwarzenegger had an event every single year in Columbus, Ohio. And I say had because last year he didn't really have it for the public because of COVID. But he has this event in Columbus, Ohio, and it's amazing. I started going to that event when I was a senior in high school. And yep, I took my camera every single year. And all I wanted to do was be a bodybuilder like Arnold, Lee Haney, Sean Ray, or one of my all-time favorites, Lee Labrada. So by the time I was 22, I qualified as a nationally ranked bodybuilder. I was still a long way from turning pro, but I was on the right track. One of the years after that, my friend that I worked with had a great idea of joining a flag football league. How bad could playing flag football be, right? Well, when you play regular football, you wear pads that can help absorb the blows you take from the physical contact that you have in football. In flag football, you don't get that. So you take the blows with your hands up through your arms and into your shoulders. Well, I remember one game... When I went to absorb one of those hits, my arm twisted. It was my right arm, and I felt something tear in the back of my shoulder, like it was my shirt tearing or like a rag tearing. Everything went black, and I saw stars. I quickly recovered from the next play, and being injured, I was trying to protect my right arm and shoulder. 
So my left arm and shoulder took a harder blow than usual. I then felt the same type of tear, like a shirt tearing in the back of my left arm. Turns out I had torn my rotator cuff from the top of my shoulder all the way around the back, all the way to in my armpit. The entire back was ripped on both sides. In fact, I went and got an MRI done. It was such a clean tear and all the way around the MRI looked okay. It wasn't until I went in for surgery they discovered the extent of the damage. I went and had my right shoulder repaired surgically and the recovery was grueling. From somebody that could go to the gym and throw hundreds of pounds around, it was hard just moving 15 pound dumbbells. For years, I tried to get back into it, but I just could not maintain the intensity that was required back then. And if I injured my shoulder during training, it would take weeks to recover. I couldn't even lift it for weeks. The scar tissue was just too much. My lifelong dream was finished. I love bodybuilding and my dream of being involved in bodybuilding was over. Or was it? One year after having surgery on my shoulder, I still was not able to lift the way that I had wanted. As part of my recovery, I went back to photography. I purchased a Sony Cybershot camera. It was brand new at the time and it was $400. It was a fun little camera. I was getting some really nice pictures. Shortly after purchasing the camera, I learned how to make the pictures look better in Photoshop. And these pictures were amazing for something that used to take a few days to get pictures back from being developed. I could instantly see them on my computer and the amount of pictures I could take were limitless. And those ones that I didn't like, I was no longer throwing away. I could just delete and they would disappear. I had a friend that was doing a bodybuilding competition shortly after and I went to watch, but I brought my camera. Back when I competed, it would cost five to twenty dollars just to get a five by seven from the photographer that was filming the event. With this new camera, I could take as many pictures as possible of my friend and he could have them all. The next day we uploaded the pictures on the computer. The pictures were amazing. It was his muscles were just popping. I was sitting at the right angle. I could zoom in as much as needed. He had about 20 great shots. We printed all of them at the local store and combined those 20 pictures for a five by seven were under $10. And here just a year before when we would compete, it would cost 20 bucks for a five by seven. You could have five pictures for 45 Within a few weeks, I realized the Arnold Classic was coming up in Columbus, Ohio. This is the second biggest professional bodybuilding event in the world. Back then, it was men and women's bodybuilding, women's physique, and women's fitness. That's when the light bulb went off. It was expensive to compete, and one of the largest expensive for professional athletes were pictures the photographers would take. If you're a competitor, you use those pictures for promotional items, selling as autographed pictures throughout the year, driving your platform to create income at that level. This was before social media. This was before cell phones had cameras on them. It was really before everybody had a cell phone even. I already had tickets and they were good tickets. So I researched all the competitors and found out what their email addresses were. And I sent them all an email explaining my story. And I was there. If they were interested, I would take pictures of them on stage and they could have all their pictures. And I would take them all for $40 if they paid ahead of time. That way, I knew which competitors to focus on when they would come on stage so I didn't use up my memory cards. Back then, memory cards were very expensive for cameras. So I had to make sure I had plenty of uh, memory cards and I had enough space 
to take pictures of all the competitors that were paying me. The response was more than I thought. I made enough money to pay for my tickets, my hotel, and my food. It was great. I had just attended the Arnold Classic, the second largest bodybuilding event in the world for exchange of my photography. I mean, I was already going and taking pictures anyways. It was like I was attending the weekend for free. What happened next was even better. The competitors absolutely loved their pictures. I had other competitors reaching out to me after the event because they heard about my pictures from the other competitors. So I charged these competitors $50 for their pictures. I made enough money to upgrade my camera after that first event to an entry-level DSR. It was a Canon Rebel. I don't remember which version, but it was one of the earlier versions of the Canon Rebel. I actually gave that camera, I still have it, but I gave it to my daughter and she uses it for her primary camera now. I also invested money into a 70 to 200 Canon lens. It was a specialty lens that specialized in low light and I could zoom in really good. A year later, the Arnold Classic was taking place and I did the same thing. This time I had more than double the number of competitors hire me for my pictures. I made enough to pay for the lens I bought the year before and the trip. This is when I knew I was on something and I was good. In fact, one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time told me my pictures were better than the professional photographers selling pictures that had press passes. These were people that were right up front and these were people that specialized in photography Many of them still have not transitioned at that time to digital cameras, so they relied on what they would get and develop them. The following year, I purchased the program for the Arnold Classic. That's the program that has pictures of all the competitors in it. And when I was going through it, that bodybuilder that said I was better than those others had used my picture for his publicity shot. It was in the official program of the Arnold Classic. He also used that picture for the Olympia that year and the year after, which is the biggest bodybuilding competition in the world. It is the Super Bowl of bodybuilding, and he used it with my picture. With that interest from all those bodybuilders and the fitness competitors, I knew I was on to something. I upgraded to a professional camera. I bought a Canon 5D. I continued doing this for the Arnold Classic every year, and it was fun. I learned a lot from it, and it made me pursue other ways to make income from my photography. I even remember one time, there was years later, I was in GNC in Atlanta, Georgia, and I was walking around the store And I remember looking at the pictures at the top that circled around the store. I love to see how photographers light the pictures and create their own style. Well, this time, one of the pictures happened to be mine. From the Arnold Classic. It wasn't one of those cardboard pop-ups you see. It was a permanently fixed picture at the top of the store's decor. I thought that was amazing. I was so happy. Then somebody pointed out to me, I made $40 on that picture and GNC was using it to market their stories. I was totally okay with that because I was learning and it's when I realized even though I wasn't competing any longer, I was still very much involved in the world of bodybuilding. Since then, I've become an expert in lighting for bodyscapes for physiques not just physiques of professional athletes, but anybody, any physique of any shape or size, I know how to light that person and make them look amazing. And it's all due to my background in bodybuilding and my love of photography. And I couldn't be happier with those skills that I learned from that. For several years, I learned how to develop multiple streams of income from my photography. I came up with three that I was really good at. They were really my bread and butter of my photography skills. Those were physique competition, portraits, 
and low lighting photography. Physique competitions only happen three or four times a year, at least the ones I was involved with. I wanted something more. I enjoyed portraits, but I didn't care for shooting portraits when it was groups of more than two people. I was a big fan of Scott Kelby, and he produces a streaming TV show called The Grid. Well, one day back in February of 2016, I was watching The Grid, and they had this guy on by the name of Peter Hurley. He is the premier headshot photographer in the world. His presentation had me so interested, and I was intrigued with his style of headshots. I had never seen headshots like this before. Well, he was going to be in Detroit that weekend, that very weekend, and was giving a free presentation on Friday night. Right then and there, I knew I was going to go. It was fantastic. I even signed up for his class he was having on Saturday for shooting headshots. Headshots at this point became my main interest, and to this day, headshots are my primary photography specialty. Peter has this online community called the Headshot Crew. It's an online coaching community with Peter's coaching. Truthfully, I signed up for it because in Detroit, he was running a special. If you sign up for a year of his Headshot Crew, he would give you a free book and he would autograph it for you. So I really did it for the book. I didn't jump in right away and get involved with the crew But Peter was a huge Instagram advocate and building your platform on Instagram. Him and I actually became friends through Instagram. And to this day, he is one of my best friends ever. But with his coaching and his help, I've become one of the top headshot photographers. And with that, I added another stream of income to my photography hobby. At this point, I had become somebody that was at a point where I could transition to a full-time photographer and not just somebody that was making enough money to pay for date night, new gear, or trips to do what I love. This podcast, Shutter Speed, is about helping you create income from your photography, your love of photography. You can start making money from those pictures that are just sitting on your hard drive. You can start creating money from those pictures by the end of the week if you know how to do it. I've been a career, life transformation, and mindset coach for years. This is what my other podcasts are about. I'm going to combine my two loves of photography and coaching to help people realize their dreams, to make their dreams become reality, to discover new dreams and make people's lives happier. I love to help people. I love to see others become successful. I always have. Too many people want to hold others back so they can advance. I'm all about helping others succeed And in return, I truly do succeed. The Shutter Speed Podcast is just the beginning. I've combined what I do and I'm establishing the 2 Millimeter Academy. My coaching business was called Make an Impact, but I'm putting everything under one umbrella and making the 2 Millimeter Academy. 2 Millimeter is the name of my studio, but it's not just a name. It's a lifestyle and what does that lifestyle mean? In my next episode, I'll be talking about 2 millimeter and what does living the 2 millimeter lifestyle mean? How can it reward you? How can you implement those core beliefs in everything you do? That's what the name 2 millimeter academy is. That's why the name is 2 millimeter academy. While I'll be focusing on how you can start making money from photography, or if you are already making money from photography, I want to help you become more successful. Even if you are making over a million dollars a year in your photography, you can take your photography to the next level by implementing the strategies I'm going to discuss on here. Now, I've been working on launching my new website. It's located at 2mmacademy.com or 2millimeteracademy.com. 
It's brand new, so I'm building it little by little. But if you go out to the website and sign up for my email list, I'll send you my top five strategies for making money in photography. This is money you can be making by the weekend. These are just little things you can do and implement, but you can make a couple hundred dollars by the weekend and pay for dinner out this weekend. Again, if you want to be part of my email list, these are the types of tips and strategies you'll get. On my website, I've also integrated Teachable. I used to use Kajabi, but recently moved to Teachable. Pat Flynn, as part of his Smart Passive Income community, implemented the use of Circle a few months ago. I am part of that, and I love Circle so much. I'm implementing Circle into my community as well. So those are things to come. Right now, if you want to follow 2mm on any other platforms, I'm active on Instagram and Clubhouse with the 2MM Academy name. LinkedIn, it's under 2MM Studios, and my website again is 2mmacademy.com. Thank you for joining me this week. I'm excited about this podcast. Like I said, photography is who I am. I've been involved with photography all my life, and over that time, I've been involved in a lot of different niches and areas of photography. I've also worked in over a dozen different streams of income and how to make money from photography. Even if it's just to buy new gear, making enough money for that is easy to do, and I'm going to share everything I know on shutter speed and my 2 millimeter Academy. I hope you all enjoyed this week. Don't forget to sign up for my newsletter so you get those top five ways to make money from your photography. This by this weekend, I look forward to talking with you all next week. Thank you for listening today. We would love to hear from you and would love you to engage with the community. For more tools, tips, and know-how, head over to the 2mm Academy at 2mmstudio.com and join us.